There's bliss here. Would you like to talk TV or babies? TV or babies? Which order? Babies first. Babies. Obviously. How is Annie? How is yours? And Ryan's you great. You have three. And you have one. And I have only one. And Annie's four and a half? She's four and a half. She'll be five in, in uh, December. Yeah. Is it the light of your life? It is the light of my life. It is surprising to me how special it is. But she's a chosen child, so you... She's an adopted baby, and mm -hmm. she's... She's an amazing little girl. I'm very fortunate. She wasn't born under your heart. She was born in it, huh? She was actually born a little far away from it. And I, had to go, I had to go bring my heart to her, but she knew. Um, pretty unusual, though. I mean, in touch with her birth mother, and is there still I'm any... not in touch with her birth mother now. That's not something that uh, um, I didn't want to keep an ongoing relationship. I thought that would be confusing. Mm -hmm. um, but I certainly, in any um, emergency or anything, I certainly could, to, could locate her if I had to. You know, I would think that it must be really important to you to keep everything together, you and Christopher, especially since when you were young. You, you're, you know, your dad and your mom split, and you had to deal with all of that stuff. Well, they split. They also, as actors at those times, really didn't keep the kids around. All the, I mean, although my mom, we traveled with her. You know, they, actors used to make a lot of movies. Now an actor makes, movie actors make one movie a year, maybe one movie every two years. You know, it used to be... If you were a working actor, you worked all the time. So it's just you, different now. In terms so it's just a whole different mentality. It's a whole different, I mean, alcoholism was rampant then. Yeah. Now, you know, everyone is getting more aware of it as a disease. So everything has changed with in raising children. Yeah. And um, certainly we're trying to keep it together because, you know, we, obviously we don't want to not be together and have her not have parents together. Yeah, I mean, we like love to... each other. It's neat to be together anyway. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, besides Chris and I, I mean, we also just want to obviously have a nice home life for her. Was anything but love, did it start out as a decision to be close to Annie? Oh, absolutely. Um, I had done two films back to back um, where I'd been out of the country for about eight months, and I just was tired of traveling. This came up. Um, seems like it, I've actually been involved with this show as long as people go to high school. Now, to me, when I think back on high school, that was one of the most interminably long <laughs> things ever. Yeah. From ninth grade to 12th grade yeah. was like a joke how long that was. So to me, the idea that I've actually been with this show as long as I went to high school blows my mind. But it doesn't, so it doesn't feel that long. No, now it just, it, it doesn't feel long. I feel like we're just beginning. And all these relationships on all the ABC shows are being consummated. You and Richard were consummated last season. So where do you go now? Well, they, we consummated early in the season so that we had the rest of the season to work it out. Uh, you know, I think the sexual boundary has really changed um, in a modern society. It's not that big a deal anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are going to be writing me letters. How come you're telling my teenager it's not a big deal? <laughs> I mean that, though. It's like, you know, whether a couple has a sexual relationship or not, I mean, it's like, okay, it's more, I think, the, the trials and tribulations of relationship are how do you get through a relationship? How do you work through dual careers, um, working and living together? Those are the issues. Whether you've had sex or not is hardly the issue anymore. Most of the audience is too tired for that anyway if they're parenting and working and trying to keep the I mean, rat race it, going, right? It, it seems to me the struggles of having a relationship mm -hmm. are what the show is about, yeah. not whether these two people have orgasms with each other. Lucky, though, because when you go down, like in, in, in December, when you... I don't think Hannah does go down. <laughs> I mean, oh, much. You have to edit that out. I, I had to take the I shot, I knew you babe. did this to me. I had to take the shot. What do you want? Life is short. Take another the record. shot. I don't think Hannah likes going down all that much. In fact, I don't know many women who do, and I think that's the subject for... Let's do it. Of show. I'll be Dr. Rose. What's her name? No, Joan, Dave, David, Joan. What are their names? Rivers. Jamie. <laughs> Hello, I watched you over there. I was going to come. Follow How you. are you? Good. 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 Bye. Bye. Now, are we going to explain that she's moved? <laughs> that my eye line is moved? We don't see her. Yeah, but you see my eye line has changed. Yeah. All right, okay. I will explain. I explain. Are we there? Are we yeah, on? We're, we're rolling. You want to explain? I'm going to explain what just happened. I know you feel like something just happened. She just moved. 
so that I could bring my eye line around so that I wasn't like this the whole time. So now that I'm kind of closer to you like this, don't get nervous. That's because we just cut out the dirty comment you made. I, hey, excuse me, excuse me. I take the rap when it's necessary. You made the comment. I merely picked up on the comment and ran with it. All right, now we're sitting down again. We're not running anymore. So when you go on hiatus, you get to make movies. You yes. just saw one last night that you love. You think yes. the audience is going to love this? I made this? a movie in January. I saw it last night. Um, it's called My Girl. Uh, it stars uh, Macaulay Culkin and a little girl named Anna Klumski and Dan Aykroyd and me. And it's wonderful. It's just wonderful. I'm thrilled with it. it it's sounds a like lovely it's... Norman Rockwell movie. Is it tender? It's tender and delicate and beautiful summer uh, coming of age story of this little 12 year old girl in this very small town. Isn't that great? It's beautiful. Nice. Really beautiful, really delicate, and really neat. We're going to like this one, huh? Yeah. It's a really nice movie for this time right now in America with all the Terminator movies, and it's a really great, sensitive little story. That's good. But yet it's going to get a big release. That's Because great. it's got Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny? In the old days, those names would have been changed like that. Oh, they would have. I ran into another person whose name, I can't remember who it was, but another actor whose name should be changed, and they're not changing it. No, no, I know, but it's good. You know, you, I was reading about a kind of a reconciliation you had with your dad. Um, he hadn't seen Annie. I got to tell you, everything you've read true? about my father and I is a crock. Is it? Yeah. You know what it is? I've realized it's nobody's business. Okay. That no, no, no. But no, what I've realized is that it's when you grow up in front of the public eye, you kind of think that your family is public domain, and it's not. No. And I found out that all of a sudden it's like. Because he and I have a great relationship, and he, we see each other, everything's fine, but when you isolate incidents and you put them into quotes, it just sounds horrible, and then people's feelings get hurt. So my feeling is, everything's great. I know you're really close to your mom, though. That well, I'm is close true. to both my parents. Yeah. They, we both, you know, I mean, I have a nice relationship with everybody in my family, thank goodness. And I try to. I work at it. We all work at relationships. What do you want for Annie? What if she decides, I think no I like cellulite. this business? <laughs> she doesn't need it. I just she want her to be it. without at cellulite. Age four, and, she won't have it. <laughs> and um, what do I want for Annie? You know, I, I want her to be able to, in a world of ease, my belief is that the only things worth getting are the things that are the hardest to get. So I hope that in this world of ease, she finds enough challenges to really make her want something. Because right now, everything is there for any child. Yeah. It's just, uh, not any child, child of, um, of uh, I, I would say, wealth. But I mean someone who does not have to worry about their livelihood. You yeah. know? Um, but a child of a well-off background, you really have to challenge them to challenge themselves. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I do that so that she's just not coasting. Um, into everything. Well, that sounds like it's a great time Because for as you. a parent, you want to help them. Mm -hmm. you naturally, you're like, you want to, but then I, I, I really do find myself pulling back and saying, no, let her bump her way through it. We, and then you meet children that are so disadvantaged that grow up to be such marvelous adults that it makes you wonder if we give our kids too much. Well, that's my point. Yes. I think we do give our kids too much. Yeah. And I think rather than just supplying toys, really make them want one, really make them wait for it, really make them really think, is that the one I want? Because if you just get all of them, you know, how many kids do you know that, you know, have, like, rock rooms full of toys and they don't want to play with anything? That's great. Whereas if you have two toys, you know, you're a lot more inclined to play with it. But it's harder because you're restricting yourself from giving, yeah. where naturally as a parent, the whole idea is to give. So it's a really, it's a strange dynamic in a modern But I think if you're, if you're taking that tact, and she's going to grow up challenging herself, isn't she? Which is great. Just no cellulite. Just like you do. Just no, no cellulite.